अफगानिस्तान की तामीर नौ के लिए अफगान टाउन की मदद करे वजीर अजम इमरान खान अकवा मुत की जनरल असम्बली से वर्चुअल खिताब कर रहे हैं of the general assembly i also wish to express appreciation for the significant achievements of your predecessor volkan bosker who guided the assembly skillfully under the difficult circumstances imposed by the covid-19 pandemic mr president the world is facing triple challenge of the covid-19 the accompanying economic crisis and the threats posed by climate change the virus does not discriminate between nations and people nor do the catastrophes imposed by uncertain weather patterns the common threats faced by us today not only expose the fragility of the international system they also underscore the oneness of humanity by the grace of almighty allah Pakistan has been successful so far in containing the covid pandemic our collaborated strategy of smart lockdowns helped save lives and livelihoods and kept the economy afloat over 15 million families survived through a social protection program of ehsas mr president climate change is one of the primary existential threats that our planet faces today Pakistan's contribution to global emissions is negligible yet we are among the 10 most vulnerable countries to the effects of climate change in the world being fully aware of our global responsibilities we have embarked upon game changing environmental programs reforesting pakistan through our 10 billion tree tsunami preserving natural habitats switching to re renewable energy removing pollution from our cities and adapting to the impacts of climate change to address the triple crisis of covid pandemic economic downturn and climate emergency we need a, a comprehensive strategy that should include number 1 vaccine equity everyone everywhere must be vaccinated against covid and as soon as possible two adequate financing must be made available to developing countries this can be ensured through comprehensive debt restructuring expanded oda redistribution of unutilized sdrs an allotment of a greater proportion of sdrs to developing countries and finally provision of climate finance three we must adopt clear investment strategies which help alleviate poverty promote job creation build sustainable infrastructure and of course bridge the digital divide i propose that the secretary general convene an sdg summit in 2025 to review and ex accelerate implementation of sustainable development goals mr president because of the plunder of the developing world by their corrupt ruling elites the gap between the rich and the poor countries is increasing at an alarming speed through this platform i've been drawing the world's attention towards the scourge of illicit financial flows from developing countries the secretary general's high level panel of financial accountability transparency and integrity called the factai panel has calculated that a staggering 7 trillion dollars in stolen assets are parked in financial haven destinations this organized theft and illegal transfer of assets has profound consequences for the developing nations it depletes 
the already meager resources, accentuates the levels of poverty, especially when laundered money puts pressure on the currency and leads to its devaluation. At the current rate, when the fact type panel estimates that a trillion dollars every year is taken out of, of the developing world, there will be a mass exodus of economic migrants towards the richer nations. What the East India Company did to India, the crooked ruling elites are doing to the developing world, plundering the wealth and transferring it to Western capitals and offshore tax havens. And Mr. President, retrieving the stolen assets from the developed countries is impossible for poor nations. The rich countries have no incentives or compulsion to return this ill-gotten Ill wealth. And this ill-gotten wealth belongs, remember, to the masses of the developing world. I foresee in the not too distant future, a time will come when the rich countries will be forced to build walls to keep out economic migrants from these poor countries. I fear a few wealthy islands in the sea of poverty will also turn into a global calamity like climate change. The General Assembly must take steps meaningfully to address this deeply disturbing and morally repugnant situation, naming and shaming the haven destinations and developing a comprehensive legal framework to halt and reverse the illicit financial flows are most critical actions to stop this great economic injustice. And at a minimum, the recommendations of the Secretary General's fact type panel should be fully implemented. Mr. President, Islamophobia is another pernicious phenomena that we all need to collectively combat. In the aftermath of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, terrorism has been associated with Islam by some quarters. This has increased the tendency of right-wing xenophobic and violent nationalist extremists and terrorist groups to target Muslims. The UN Global Counterterrorism Strategy has recognized these emerging threats. We hope the Secretary General's report will focus on these new threats of terrorism posed by Islamophobes and right-wing extremists. I call on the Secretary General to convene a global dialogue on countering the rise of Islamophobia. Our parallel efforts at the same time 